Here it is, the long-awaited boat tour. Flying Coney's Heil changed quite a bit during the time in the shipyard. And I bet you can't wait to see the empty Heil and the chaos. Built as a warship, fished the stormy North Sea, converted into a beautiful sailing ship, unfortunately converted once more into a motor sailor and finally rescued by us. We are now dedicated to bring the ship back to life. We have to restore the hull, build an entirely new interior and eventually convert her back into a sailing ship. And then we can finally sail the ocean together with you. So welcome aboard Flying Coney. Hello, it's so good to see you again. I'm Barbara and together with Daniel I restored the historic steel ship Flying Coney. Right after we signed the contract, we filmed the first boat to on Flying Coney. So if you ever wondered how she looked like before we transferred her into a floating building site, you should watch this video. And many of you asked for an updated boat tour. What happened during the time in the shipyard and how does Flying Coney look right now? So we took the time and filmed the new boat tour for you. Flying Coney is quite a mess right now and we didn't have the time to tidy up. So you get an absolutely authentic tour. I hope you like it anyway. But before we start with the boat tour, let's welcome all our new supporters on Patreon, Paypal and Super Thanks. And a huge thanks goes to our officers, who always go above and beyond to keep this project going. Thank you so much. And now, welcome aboard Flying Coney. Just like last time, we start the tour on the port side, right in front of the aft deck. Not much has changed on deck since we bought Flying Coney. And now that I have a closer look at the deck, I think we should bring out the pressure washer more often. We still have our hinged mast, now with a new gooseneck. In the forecastle you will see that it stands exactly at the same spot where the original sailing ship mast was. However, this one is much smaller, so when we convert Flying Coney back to a sailing ship, we need two new steel masts. And yes, we still do have our Admiralty anchor and our big windlass. We definitely want to keep both. Actually, this perspective makes Flying Coney a little bit smaller than she is, because the wheelhouse is about at the center of the boat, and you wouldn't think that there are 10 more meters of ship behind it. The spill will come in handy when we use the current motor sailor rig. We hope we can actually sail a bit on our voyage to Germany. And these are the two parts of the big overplating Kess removed during the shipyard time. We still have to decide what we want to do with them. There are a few requirements we have to comply with the CVO, the regular safety inspection. Things like fire extinguishers, AIS, emergency engine shutdown and life boys. And now let's head down to the engine room. This is the star of the engine room. It's a DEF 1160 with the keel cooling. It's a turbocharged and aftercooled engine with 320 horsepower. We actually have a detailed engine room tour where we explain everything more in depth. But in this video I want to give you an overview. So let's start with the additional electric hydraulic pump for the steering. We also have a manual pump at the helm and one at the engine. 
This is our main generator, a Deutz Lombardini two-cylinder engine. The electric system still looks a bit sketchy, but the 220 volt system is disconnected right now and we are about to rip everything out and start from scratch. Separate starting batteries, and a forklift battery house bank. This water pump is probably still from her fishing days. Maybe we can restore it. An old Perkins P3 genset. Very, very old not working and we want to get rid of it to get more space. The fuel system is quite interesting. We do have a bunker capacity of about 8000 liter, which could bring us easily across the Atlantic. From there the diesel is transferred through this filter to the day tank. That way there's just clean diesel in the day tank. And from the day tank the diesel is gravity fed through a filter and water separator to the main engine. Our new commercially rated Seawolf. And here we have the previously mentioned diesel filter. A twin disc gearbox which will probably last forever. Overall the engine room was designed for a much bigger engine and all that space is not needed anymore for a sailing ship. So we've planned to make it way smaller. To gain more living space especially in the aft cabin once the quarter deck is lowered. Speaking of the aft cabin, it's the only compartment of Flying Coney that's above the waterline. Therefore, there was no need to rip everything apart during the shipyard time. Right now, we use the aft cabin as a storage room, so it's quite a mess. We got some comments wondering why we want to get rid of this nice space. And I get it. It really is a nice living space. However, we have to lower the quarter deck about one meter to transfer Flying Coney into a proper sailing ship. But we will not lose the aft cabin. There's still a lot of space underneath the cabin sole. We just have to remove the floor to get a decent sized captain's quarter. The bathroom serves as another storage area and is not in use anymore. The shower is leaking, the sink is not connected and we decided to put the toilet out of service after we flooded the engine room. And well, maybe that was an overshare. If you wonder how we can live in such a mess, the answer is we don't. During the time in the shipyard we ripped out everything that made the ship livable. And that's why we moved to the camper. We do have watertight doors for each compartment, even for the aft cabin.
This was our improvised galley for the shipyard time. The engine control panel and the solar chargers. GPS Radar and an autopilot. Radar position indicator AIS and radio. and our almost new outboard engine and Honda Genset. As you see, we do have all mandatory systems aboard. Actually, even more, and they are all working fine. If you think they are outdated and need to be replaced, we would like to welcome you on Patreon. Even the companionway to the fish room has a watertight hatch and it's very steep. This is the former fish room and we used that compartment as storage space as well and we definitely have to tidy up everything before we move to Germany. What's interesting is, the fish room was still insulated with cork from the fishing days. Of course the cork got wet and over the decades the frames rusted away. So here many frames are completely gone. But all the other compartments are in much better condition. We got many questions if we still have sales. And yes, here they are. Surprisingly, we still do use our pantry. Another watertight door to the forecastle. Overall, Flying Coney has five independent compartments. That is much more than needed and very reassuring. As you see the hull and frames are actually in quite good condition. Everything is still covered in a soft sticky coating, which has proven to be great against corrosion. We thought a lot about how to combine the traditional soft coating with modern insulation, but more about that in an upcoming video. The forecastle is already completely empty except of the huge diesel tank and the broken water tank. And here is the original mast step from her time as a sailing ship. She probably had wooden masts back then and the forward one was at the exact same position as the new steel mast. Well, that's the main task for the next shipyard time getting rid of the concrete and repair all the broken frames. Most frames in the fish room and in the forecastle are broken right where the concrete starts. 
but apart from that, the condition of the forecastle is pretty amazing for a 73-year-old ship. And that was that. I hope you enjoyed the tour on our 82 feet long floating building site. I hope you enjoyed the tour. We tried to show you everything and explain a bit. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.